What's happening, everybody? Welcome to a hungover, dehydrated edition of Anthony's Takes. Right now, we're gonna do a full movie review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, saw it yesterday with my son for his birthday, and I would have to say, um, it definitely lived up to the hype uh, of being you know, a follow-up to one of the greatest Marvel movies that has ever existed. Um, right now, I won't talk spoilers, so if you're watching this, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but um, I'll let you know when I will talk spoilers so you can cut it off before you uh, go and go ahead and uh, see the movie. So, um, but just comparing it to the first one, it definitely met up with that uh, in regards to the plot, the storyline, um, the plot twist that, you know, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about, the plot twist at the end, and uh, they did a real good job at twisting the story to make it seem like <clears throat> a certain somebody was the villain of the movie. And, but when you're watching a movie, it doesn't turn out to be that way. And I kind, I, I, I don't want to say that I kind of saw it coming because I didn't see it coming. Uh, the plot twist that happened. And it was a good job by, uh, by James Gunn to, you know, keep that under wraps as much as possible. But... If you know the comics, if you've read the comics and you're aware of who, what characters are who and what their allegiances are, then when you hear that, you know, um, they casted Kurt Russell to play Peter Quill's father, but then they say, oh, his name is Ego. Well, okay, so they went down the road of uh, changing some characters, origins, you know, this of that nature. Um, because as you know, Ego is a living planet. So it was interesting for me going into it, seeing how they were gonna play that into um, making Ego be Peter Quill's father. I felt a lot of the characters had their equal amount of screen time to uh, shine. Uh, Rocket showing off his expertise once again with uh, gadgets and uh, booby traps and you know explosives and uh, that one scene in the woods. Uh, <laughs> it was just it was it was sick. It was they did a good job of putting together another great soundtrack for the movie uh, and the songs were played at the exact perfect right times in the movie, uh, the right moments to make. The song capture what's going on in the scene, just like the first one, you know. So, uh, good job with that. And overall, uh, very enjoyable movie. I would definitely pay to see it again in the theater um, if I had time. I would definitely pay again to see it in the theater if I had time, you know. But, uh, it's just so crazy, you know, with life as it is to try to, you know, re-watch a movie in the movie theater. And, um, shit. I, I bought the special edition, Target edition of, uh, of Rogue One and I haven't even watched the uh, special features on it yet. <laughs> or any of the, uh, deleted scenes, the deleted scene disc or whatever. So... So, with that being said, I would have to give this movie four out of five. Oh, hell yes! Alright, so. This is bottle number two of electrolytes. So, um. Now I'm going to talk spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to spoil it for you, do not watch this, okay? So, uh, as expected, you know, the opening scene of that movie um, was what you saw in the trailer. They're fighting that big old 
creature with a big ass mouth and you see Drax go into the mouth and try to uh yeah that was one thing that was very surprising you know Drax they're definitely still making him you know the comedic well everybody's comedic in the movie but like he's that comic relief character of the Guardians you know and they're continuing that even heavier and uh, he had some really great uh, scenes. Oh, especially with Mantis, you know. Of course, he thinks she's beautiful, but he just, you know, uh, doesn't want to let her know that. So he just keeps calling her ugly, saying that she's hideous because of how she looks and uh, the way she has her antenna uh, coming out of her head like that. And... Um, <laughs> That shit was hilarious. But uh, towards the end, he was like, "You are beautiful." And he wait, he pauses on the inside. <laughs> oh shit! But like, she what was funny is like she didn't even respond to it. She just you know they're focused on what was happening. And um, the plot twist, the plot twist that you know, ego uh, being Peter's dad actually placed that tumor in Peter Peter's mom's head and um, God that shit that shit was fucking emotional right there when uh, when he said that like oh it, was, it hurt me so much to you know because as the movie going along you know he meets his father and they start bonding and everything like that talking about his mom but Towards the end, he finally reveals his uh, true purpose, which was to impregnate a creature from every planet, just so he can have a celestial, you know, offspring that has his genes, just so that every planet in the galaxy has a piece of him, I believe, and um, he's part of, you know the planet and he controls everything so in order to do that he needs two beings or the power of two beings so him and the fact that Peter is not the first child that he has had that he's tried to bond with yet all of the ones before Peter have not had the genes and so all of the bones, all of the, you know, skulls, skeletons down below in the cavern that he had were like all the bodies, all the dead bodies of all of Ego's children from all these different planets that uh, didn't have the power. And which was why Ego gets word of someone who held the Infinity Stone in their hand and didn't die. So that's what triggered Ego to finally come and find Star-Lord, Peter. Yeah, that was that was definitely um, a really good, uh, really good plot line right there. That's the reason all of a sudden Ego wanted to find Peter, was that he found out he uh, was able to hold an Affinity Stone, so he has the power within him. He has Ego's power, and then Ego s starts to show. Peter how to harness his power uh, himself and started to teach him but uh, if Ego dies that power goes away from Peter so um, you know the short-lived time that Peter had to enjoy those powers that he had um, you know you see it go away as Ego dies because of uh, the core of the planet became, gets destroyed, explodes, uh, thanks to Baby Groot. The whole little storyline with um, <clears throat> Yondu, Yondu getting disowned by the Ravagers, uh, led by Sylvester Stallone. Like I knew Sylvester Stallone was casted, and I tried to stay away as much as possible from spoilers or articles seeing who he was casted as, you know, he just had a little surprise appearance in about one or two scenes, and it was just to uh, let Yondu know that 
he wasn't no longer part of the Ravagers because he took in uh, Peter when he was a kid and they're not supposed to, uh, I guess it goes against their code of the Ravagers to take in children or something like that. But it all makes sense. It all makes sense of why Yondu did not want to bring Peter to Ego. And the reason being was because Yondu knew what Ego was doing to all of the children that um, Ego was in search for. And he's in search for them to, you know, to see if they have his powers that he may have, may have passed down to them. But when he finds out that they don't have the power he has, he just kills them, you know, for for whatever reason, he just kills them. And so, that's why Yondu put it in his head that, uh, <laughs> he put it in Peter Quill's head that, oh, we're gonna eat you, you know. But he was just doing that to protect him. Like, all of the Ravagers, even in the first one and the second one, saying, oh, Yondu, you're soft on Peter, you know. You're so you let him get away with everything. He's backstabbed you with the, about the orb, and um, you still haven't killed him or anything. So it basically tears apart the Ravagers. They they split down the middle, and like uh, one half goes against uh, Yondu, and one half is with, and the half that's with Yondu gets killed, just like just fucking thrown out into space because they had that they stuck up for Yondu, and then they ended up. Uh, destroying his thing on his head so that he couldn't control the the arrow that he has <laughs> and uh, man and that was a really sad moment to see him uh, get killed now Marvel movies has this history of never killing any of its characters and when they do they come back to life um, you know on many occasions but um, for them to kill off uh, Yondu, I know it was probably a hard decision. He's a great character, and Mike, Mike, Michael Rooker that plays him, um, he does a real good job with him on screen, and uh, I know he'll definitely be missed in Infinity War or any other Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Um, but yeah, that was definitely a twist to where, uh, you know, of course, it's heartbreaking for Peter to find out his father is a psychopath the way he is and the, the shady shit that he does just for his goal to, you know, have himself in or control of every planet in the galaxy. And uh, the twist of, you know, having Yondu actually be the father because he did raise him, even though, you know, the whole time they're telling Peter, "Oh yeah, you're, we're not, we're not gonna take you to your dad because you're skinny and that's really good for thieving." That's what that I believe that's what the line that they used in the movie. That's good for thieving. So, but the real reason was because Yondu did not want to give Peter to Ego. So, um, and it was for a real, really good reason. And I knew, I knew something was wrong. As soon as uh, Mantis started to get real uneasy, you really start to like get a feel that like something's gonna go wrong with Ego and him uh, turn out to be the villain of the movie because of that scene where uh, Mantis is talking to Drax and all of a sudden she's like, "Oh, I need to tell you something." And then Gamora comes out and then Mantis doesn't want to say it in front of Gamora for some reason, and then so you know. Something, Gamora got a sense of that something wasn't right, tried to warn uh, Peter about it, you know, saying that they need to really leave this planet before anything else happens, but then, you know, Peter took it as, oh, are you jealous that, I, look, I finally found my family, and, uh, and you don't like it because you liked me when I, you know, didn't have a family. So, they had their little dispute. She goes on her own. Nebula, you know, another great character that um, 
you knew was going to turn on the Guardians, and then but then she ends up helping him out because of, you know, uh, ego trying to destroy and uh, control the planets. So she had no choice but to help him out, reluctantly. And the whole, the whole time throughout the movie, you know, the uh, I forgot their names, but whatever the, whatever the, uh, the name of the people that are all gold, like just spray painted in gold completely, and uh, did a real good job with the trailers of you know making it seem like that's the villain of the movie, but it wasn't. You know, they were hired to kill that sl slug looking thing in the beginning by them but then <laughs> rocket being rocket um, steals some of the batteries that uh, that they hold dear to their heart and Jesus just because of that they you know set out on a quest to kill the guardians just because of the damn three batteries that um, rocket stole <laughs> and uh, it, blame it on Drax you know that whole closing sequence that was pretty sad, almost mere, uh, uh, tugged at the heartstrings a bit. Uh, the whole little uh, cremation of Yondu and, you know, spreading his ashes in outer space. Oh, I really liked how Ego was given the honor of crushing Peter's Walkman. And, you know, as he was turning on Peter, and then, so it had me thinking, like, fuck, what are they going to do now? Like, uh, why the hell would they crush it so, you know? And it was, they had that connection where they bonded over, you know, how the love of music from Peter's mother, you know, giving him the tape and, you know, listening to music together and, you know, uh, that was on the tape. So he ends up crushing it with his hand. But towards the end... What was that? that? That one Ravager, I forgot his name. Gives him a Zune. I remember those. <laughs> I think I had one. I had one of the first, uh... I had one of the first models that came out when those hit the scene. It was like the answer to the iPod. When the, the huge iPod that, you know, the first iPod that hit the market. And then Zune was like a, um an answer to that to compete in <laughs> he's got it's got about like 300 songs on there and it's like Peter's like 300 what and then so you know he definitely upgraded from a Walkman to a Zune that has more than 300 songs the end credit scenes from what I remember there was like five of them throughout the end credits uh, spread out but uh, some of them some of them were just you know just comedic nonsense, but then like the one where the people that I can't remember the name, uh, the people spray painted in all gold, their golden skin, and uh, they're sitting in the room and she basically introduces Adam Warlock. Uh, Adam Warlock, another character that's been missing in um, the Avengers. He was always part of the Avengers. I'm not sure of the original set of Avengers, but uh, his introduction was long overdue. But, you know, they had to push him out slowly. And Guardians of the Galaxy is a perfect way to uh, introduce him. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely be looking forward to uh, who they cast to play Adam Warlock, you know. There was rumors of them introducing him, like, in the movie, but, you know, they didn't want to cram the movie with too many new characters, so, with a lot going on, uh, with Mantis and, and Nebula, the whole, you know, the whole plotline of Nebula and Yondu coming to the Guardians of the Galaxy. So, let's wrap it up. That's my review. Um, let me know if you th think that the movie lived up to the hype. Let me know, you guys, if you liked the movie, if you've seen it, if you didn't see it. Uh, go see it. I definitely recommend it. It's uh, definitely one of the best Marvel movies that they have. Let me know down in the comment section if you liked it. If you didn't like it, let me know. Let's discuss it. If you did like this review, hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe for more videos. 
if you did not, you can eat a dick.